Bonjour, bonjour à tous, bienvenue pour cette Hello everyone and welcome to this session where we're going to talk about how we can achieve full employment. So please take your seats. We'll take time for questions later, so don't hesitate. If you have questions, prepare them and uh, ask them. We have a fabulous panel with us and we're lucky to have on this panel uh, Elena Sankamedi, who's uh, member of the Cercle des Économistes, a teacher at the Paris School of Economics and a researcher at the CNRS. Beside you, we have Olivier de Sopt, who is the Minister of Employment, Work and Professional Integration. Thank you for your presence here. Beside you, Jean-François Jean Copé, who is the former Minister of Budget, the Mayor of the City of Meaux. Alain Mouillac, Roumiac, who's the president of Manpower France. We have Tarek Sherif, who's the president of Connect, uh, Employers Association of uh, Companies in Tunisia. And beside me, Inigo Fernandez de Meza, who's the president of the Institutos Economicos. Sorry for my uh, poor Spanish. So we'll begin with you. Elena, I just wanted to say a few words to give an overview of what full employment uh, constitutes and what are the challenges in reaching full employment that is durable. So according to uh, economics textbooks, full employment is uh, defined as frictional unemployment, un unemployment for a short period, just the time it takes to find a new job that fits with their profile. However, if we talk about the International La Labor Office, that we focus on the labor rate. So there's a very low uh, unemployment rate that will correspond to a situation of full employment. And that uh, reference unemployment rate can vary from one country to the next. We'll be looking at the historic series of unemployment in each country in order to deduce what is the reference unemployment level to say that we're in a situation of full employment. For France, it can be the current situation, 7 or 8 percent of unemployment, which corresponds to full employment in France. Having said that, we're not focusing on the composition of unemployment, but on the level of unemployment. Then we can look at this from the standpoint of uh, demand for labor, demand from companies, and we could say that a situation of full employment is a situation in which companies have difficulty in recruiting. That is symptomatic of the fact that everyone is already at work. Of course, this is not a situation of uh, sustainable full employment. There are other definitions of full employment that exist. But for me, it's a labor market that's fluid, dynamic, where there's a good fit between the profiles that are being sought by companies and the skills that the uh, job seekers have. And I think that there's still a lot of uh, work to be done on this across the world because companies and societies are changing. We've been through several years of COVID, remote working. Will remote working make it possible to boost employment markets. Right now, there are huge difficulties in recruiting for most companies. And the challenges are what to do about long-term people in unemployment. How can we support them? How can we work with them? How can we bring them back to employment? And the risks, we need to look at the risks of long-term unemployment, a risk of uh, just doing little jobs here and there. How can we ensure that we can improve this and improve the competitiveness of teaching, improve the connections between schools, training and companies, a lot more communication on both sides because it's also up to the companies to understand what young people are looking for today, what, the job, what jobs are most appealing. And now I'll hand the floor over to the panel, but the last segment is the segmentation of the labor market. In order to reach sustainable full employment, we have to have a dynamic mobile labor market. The jobs cannot just be in one single place and the unemployed elsewhere with no mobility. Is remote working an answer to this? It could be at a certain level. 
and there are lots of other challenges to take up and I'll now hand the floor over to the panel members. So let's continue. We'll hear from all of you on this question of full employment and then you can participate in the audience. There are two ways. Either you send your questions up on the website or there'll be a roving microphone, a more traditional way of taking questions. So Minister, you've just arrived, so we would like to hear from you. We know that reaching full employment is an objective that's not necessarily easy to reach. Yes, hello, everyone. I'm delighted to be here with you. In, I've just arrived, as you said. Uh, I took my functions on a few weeks ago, and I wanted to start with the first comment that concerns the title of this uh, session today and the ministry that I'm in charge of. Today, we're talking about moving to full employment, and when the President of the Republic and the Prime Minister named a uh, minister for work, they named me as a minister, not a minister for employment, but a minister for full employment. So that is an indication of the period in which we're living in 10 or 15 years ago. Just talking about full employment seemed completely unattainable. And today we're in an economic situation, despite uncertainty, despite despite the geopolitical context that is characterized by a decrease in unemployment rates that's continued over several years. We're at 7.3 percent, and this could be considered as structural unemployment in France. So this prospect of full employment is now seems possible. It's our first answer, a first objective. 7 percent is a figure that uh, uh, satisfies you? No. Uh, we're at 7.3. We would like it to be lower. We we're at 9 a few years ago. So we have to show the progress that we have been making. I would like to add two things. Full employment exists elsewhere if it doesn't exist in France. And the examples in Scandinavia have inspired a lot of policies not only in this uh, five-year term, but in previous ones, we tried to make the labor market more agile and make it more secure in that it's more predictable. We have measures to, uh, to set up pay scales for employees. There's been a revolution in terms of the law also because we've progressively gone from a situation where we pr protect jobs to a situation where we protect people. We're giving rights to people, and this is the case of the personal training account, which is the an additional stage uh, in employment. And we also have the possibility of giving people rights at the scale of a career and not just rights at, in terms of the job that they're currently occupying, then this will help them secure their career. The full employment objective is not just a political objective or a, a pipe dream that says that the political measure is based on full employment. It's a need. If we want to maintain our current social model, if we want to maintain the protections that French people have, We've seen how important they are in the last two years, and they're more they're important to get the economy back up and running. We need to bring in more revenue and avoid uh, non-necessary expenditures. When we talk about unemployment and re remaining unemployment, we're talking of several hundred million euros a year. If we reduce unemployment, we can finance uh, social aid, re bring down our deficits, and, and eliminate expenses to accompany people back to work and not, uh, the, not just focusing on employment. So to add to what you were saying, the objective of full employment is a good thing, but we have to measure it in terms of the rate of activity through the situation that we're, uh, a recovery situation that we're experiencing today, we're seeing people coming back to the labor market, uh, but other people who are not coming back at all. Yes, there's a shortage of labor today, but that explains why there is a shortage of labor. We have an employment rate today that's 68 percent. It's the highest since 1970, and even for the 15 to 25. Uh, we were at 34 percent employment in a period of life where they're often in training, and this is three points more than in 99. So we are bringing people back to employment, but before we bring them back to employment, we have to uh, show that we can come back to activity. There are several priorities. The first priority, that's an operational one, is continuing to professionalize teaching and develop professional teaching in the widest sense. This requires the reform of the professional education that we're going to attack with my new delegate minister, Carole Grandjean, with the 
new organization in the government. This is the first time that professional education, the professional high schools have been managed by two ministries, the Ministry of National Education, but also the Ministry of Labor, because the president considers that the success of the our reform of professional education won't succeed if we don't get the labor market involved. So for all of the heads of companies, there's more participation in governance, including in the definition of the, te the teaching programs in the professional high schools throughout France. We also want to develop uh, apprenticeships. I, I won't come back to that topic, though. The second priority is to work more, even to meet economic needs and development needs. I will be backing a reform of the uh, of pensions that people are waiting for. So what does it mean to work more collectively, more in a lifetime, more in a society? Thirdly, we want to bring people back to employment. We want to uh, reform uh, one of our um, minimum wage requirements to, to bring people back to employment, making the system a bit harder. If there's a conditionality of access to rights, and there's also a priority that's more focused on mediation more than action. It, it is working with our social partners, and that's the appeal of uh, jobs. In, when, in a period where it's hard to recruit people, that, and everyone has, has been saying this, the work conditions and the conditions of life in the workplace is uh, a part of the acceptance of recruitment and the quality of work in different sectors. There's a lot of work to be done on this, and we're going to work with our social partners on this question. Thank you, Minister, and we'll continue with you, Jean-Francois Copé. Votre vision à vous du plein emploi, vous aurez sûrement le. So, what's your vision of full employment? I'm sure you'll be able to comment on the minister's proposal, but we'd like to hear your vision. I found. What Olivier Dussopt said is very interesting. We don't have a lot of good news right now, let's be honest about that. But in the good news we have, there is the fact that the President of the Republic and the Prime Minister named a former budget minister as the Minister of uh, Labor and Full Employment. That's excellent news. I did play this role. We talked about this before the, the session started. When you're in charge of the budget, you're constantly asking the other ministers who are spending money to assess the, the results of their expenditures. So the prospect that uh, Olivier Dussopt can say to his departments, okay, if we're, when we're using public money to help employment, we need to verify how many jobs we've actually created. This is going to be a, a, a paradigm change, an important one. And then I'd add a second element. The result of this, the first five years of Macron's presidency was good in terms of employment. We can't hide that on these topics where we're crying about everything that goes wrong. The results obtained thanks to the Macron ordinances, which are liberal in terms of economics. We did what should be done in a modern economy. We lightened up conditions to access employment. We lightened up hiring conditions. We dropped in as much as possible uh, fiscal and social constraints, and all of that is good news. But today, given that all of this has d been done with public financing, we're in a situation it's a, it's a historic choice with full employment because the theory of full employment, as you said earlier, madam, is a theory that dates back to the period prior to where unemployment help was uh, was to just help people get over a few months of unemployment. Now there's structural assistance. People are often losing money if they go back to work. So they want to continue to be collecting unemployment. This is a huge problem in France. Nobody wants to talk about it. Other countries in Europe look at us wide-eyed, saying, "What's that's amazing. French people are not happy when they have a unique social protection system in the world. Not one single French person paid for a vaccine or a test. And everyone thinks that we're really unhappy in France. People have lost lost sight of reality because uh, they haven't been able to put this into perspective. As Olivier Dussopt said, there's a historic choice for the government now. The LR party decided not to participate in the government, but, the, but you have decisions to make in the government, heavy decisions, given the context where you don't have a budgetary margin anymore because inflation is back and interest rates will go up and we have a, an impossible budget equation. Or, sorry, this is the ambiance, but 
we're going to continue to be writing checks without any countermeasures. We won't be able to pay. We've seen this with increases in social minimum wages and increase measures to increase purchasing power. I don't see how we can continue that way. Or there's an, another approach that I think should be adopted and as soon as possible. As uh, Olivier Dussot said, we need to be honest with French people and say, yes, of course, we're going to preserve some uh, assistance because the most modest people should not suffer. We need to work with them. But there's a, a, a counterpart to this. We need to restructure the economy. And if we don't do this, we will only uh, sit at home and cry about uh, the, the fact that it was not possible. So we talked about apprenticeship. We've talked about uh, uh, study work-study programs. There are lots of people who come to see me saying oh, we need a work-study program. Nobody can, is proposing it in our uh, system. I'm going to lo lose a year of study. We also need to, to uh, relax the working hours. If there's inflation we, and we increase salaries, we're going to have to produce more. Otherwise, we're going to, going to create a poverty trap with in this inflationist spiral and we're going to have to eliminate uh, wasteful public spending. There's an expert at this uh, panel with us. If we don't do it, we will have the worst equations when all of the European countries are going to uh, put their ships in a row, including the, the Germans. And it, we have to make a historic choice now, not in the coming years, but in the coming weeks, because afterwards it will be too late. Thank you, Mr. Copé. Alain Roumiak, we'd like to hear from you as the president of Manpower. You're really at the forefront. You see what's going on in, on the ground. Can you explain how you see things today? Hello, everyone. We have we send 100,000 workers to uh, thousands of clients every day, and uh, often these are people are recruited with full-time contracts. There are lots of companies who don't find the skills that they require and who are some, sometimes see their business activity slowed because they're missing uh, employment, so they have to bring their ac business activity down. There are people who are looking for jobs, but there are two categories. As Jean-Francois Copé said, some people say it's better that I keep my uh, government subsidies than work. It's better to work part-time than full-time because I will still get benefits. It's up to the public to decide if this is uh, uh, acceptable and uh, whether work should pay more than uh, subsidies do. Then there's a second category of people. If you don't support these people, if you don't help them, they're incapable, and you have to recognize this. Our system, our society, means that they're incapable of navigating, of finding their path. They don't know what sector to turn to. They don't know how to get training. There, is, uh, there are many actors in the field of employment. There's uh, France Travail, who tries to simplify the access to employment for everyone. These people, we need to support them. We need to help them so that they can uh, join a, a, a work project. We need to train them, not just with hard skills. We ne also need to train them in terms of behavior and soft skills and basic topics such as going to work every day because they don't have uh, those basics. So that's the work that we need to do with everyone. And I'm convinced between the private and public actors, we need to work together in order to do this. And if we want to meet demand, the demand of companies, we're going to have to be able to find these people, to bring them back into the labor market. There's an economic and social need for this. We decided to invest in this topic. And today we're announcing the acquisition of a company of 450 people working in the public sector of employment to bring people back out of difficulty and into employment. And we hope that with our teams, we'll be able to reposition them and our customers and accelerate the movement to really bring people back to employment who are distant from it. And if we can't all support them together, it's not 
because we tighten the grip on the financial aspects that they will find their path. That's not going to work. Thank you, Mr. Rumiak. Uh, Tariq, uh, let's uh, move on. You have your own uh, uh, insight uh, into the situation in Tunisia. Are you coping with the same problems and difficulties, and what would be your solutions? Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the floor. In Tunisia, we are facing the same problems and issues, but uh, uh, but there's a slight difference. We went uh, through COVID. After COVID, uh, people's uh, attitudes and behaviors have changed, and people want to work uh, differently in some sectors. There's a shortage of uh, staff, a shortage of employees, and uh, this is a situation that is experienced by France, especially in the health sector. In the health sector, there's a shortage of uh, people, and uh, these uh, uh, people have um, migrated to Europe and they haven't uh, changed jobs in Tunisia, so they decided to migrate to Europe. So, so there's a difference between the European countries and the Mediterranean countries. Of course, that it's necessary to train people regarding jobs, uh, primary jobs, so people can uh, find a job in the primary sector. But uh, with regard to executives, there's a shortage of executives, there's a lack of investments, and um, not too many companies hire these executives. And I think that we'll have the opportunity to talk about uh, cooperation. Some cooperation should be nurtured between the Mediterranean countries and Europe. Have a look at the situation in the United States. So the, uh, the US has uh, cooperated with Mexico. And have a look at the Chinese uh, situation. I think that Europe should cooperate with the Mediterranean countries, with Africa. The potential is huge. The human potential is colossal. So I think that we need to have training bridges between Europe, Africa, and the Mediterranean countries. Uh, there would be a risk. Uh, Mrs. Lagarde uh, talked about that topic. Uh, um, people will uh, migrate. Let us not forget uh, climate change. Let us not uh, forget uh, hydric uh, stress, water stress in Africa. So we need to get a good framework in order to prevent uh, and control and useless uh, migration flows. Uh, at the end of the day, in the different countries, uh, we want uh, uh, to achieve full employment, but we want to uh, create value. We want to create growth, and I think that the African continent uh, has uh, everything it takes uh, to do that if we can train people, if we can prepare people, if we can deliver uh, some uh, training programs, if we can prepare uh, the uh, people to get a job. So, uh, so we are all looking for growth, but people have talked about degrowth or reduction of growth. But uh, you're right uh, regarding uh, jobs, regarding uh, public uh, spending. Uh, growth is key. Have a look at the situation in airports. Uh, I can tell you that I'm uh, really flabber flabbergasted. Uh, some uh, uh, flights are cancelled because of the lack of uh, staff members. So I think that we need to peruse this uh, question, uh, but we need to move away from the uh, European framework. We need to focus on regions. I think that cooperation is key. And all the countries will benefit. Uh, thank you, Tarak Sherif. And uh, Inigo Fernandez de Mesa, so regarding your country, what is the situation like? So what can you tell us? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my friends is very poor, so allow me to, to speak uh, in English. Um, I think that we, there has been uh, many topics touched upon uh, before. I mean, uh, the first thing is uh, what is full employment, and I think that we all agree that full employment is when everybody that wants to work works. But I think something is changing in our uh, labor markets. I mean, and I can tell you about Spain. I mean, uh, we have a 14% unemployment rate, 
but it's almost impossible to find uh, a driver, to find a waiter, and I don't tell even uh, to find someone uh, who is a specialist on, on, on certain jobs, uh, technicians, uh, architects, or whatever. So uh, there is a scarcity of jobs. I mean, before uh, the COVID, we were very concerned uh, about the capacity of the economy to recover uh, all the jobs lost because of the COVID. But the reality is that now, with a very high unemployment rate, there is really a lack of, of jobs, not only of uh, high-skilled jobs, but also low-skilled jobs. So I, I think that uh, not only in Spain, but across Europe and across the developed world, something is happening in the labor market that we need to explore and to analyze. And probably it will take some time before we are aware about what is happening. So um, in my opinion, the case of Spain there, and I think probably it applied to many other countries, there is some uh, issues that are happening, some structural issues that are happening and are affecting the, the labor market. For example, I mean, we all have aging societies. There are many people who are retiring and are leaving certain jobs in the agriculture, in the fishing sector, um, in other sectors like transport or mining, which uh, young people doesn't want to, to, to work in. And these are vacancies that are, 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 are there. There is a big mismatch as well, and this is something that probably happens across Europe, between what uh, firms are looking for and what uh, job seeker can offer. And probably we should improve training, we should improve our education better, I mean, uh, matching uh, what firms want and what universities and, 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 and job trainings uh, offers. And this is probably a very important thing. I mean, we have talked about um, I mean, uh, learning uh, during the whole life. I mean, many jobs that now are on offer will disappear, and there will be new jobs that are not now. And we need probably uh, 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 a long life career and constant learning. And this is something that uh, we should uh, look for. I mean, um, there are many other reasons uh, that we should improve. Probably uh, the stop of immigration probably has effect as well this, like, uh, uh, this lack of, of certain jobs. And there are a lot of rigidities in the, in the, in the labor market. Uh, I mean, in the case of Spain, it's absolutely uh, very, very important to have a geographic mobility. And for example, due to the uh, I mean, housing uh, problems, this level mo mobility is, is very low, and this is something that should be improved. And uh, the last thing is something that has been mentioned before. I mean, um, at least in, in, in the case of Spain, we have a very generous uh, benefit scheme which probably need to be redefined in order to be more efficient so that it does not disincentivize people to active looking for jobs. I mean, and this is uh, extremely important, especially in remote areas and rural areas where the cost of living is, 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 is cheaper and, uh, uh, and for this reason the benefit schemes are more generous. So uh, probably we need, uh, before, I mean, uh, trying to, to find the right measures to understand better what's going on. I mean, some trends are changing and, uh, and, and, and some change has accelerated because of the COVID. And uh, this is something that, that we should uh, explore. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Inigo. Thank you. Alors, merci pour vos... so, uh, so thank you for your questions. There are some uh, questions uh, coming in. So, uh, Minister, uh, people uh, talked about uh, structural unemployment and some people will remain unemployed instead of working because the welfare system in France is extraordinary, one of the best in Europe. But what can we do in order to urge people to get back to work? Uh, first of all, we need to uh, value uh, the uh, revenues from work, but there are some limitations, as Jean-Francois Coppet said. So you have uh, some people who will be exempt from uh, contributions. There are some uh, complement uh, measures that uh, we voted upon, so people will get 1.6 times the uh, minimum wage. Minimum wage, and uh, there are some people uh, who can uh, get uh, the uh, active uh, solidarity um, income. So, in the short term, we will increase uh, uh, the uh, support payments. Uh, 
but uh, the activity bonus should be increased because we don't want to have big gaps between the two. And there's uh, another uh, topic. We need to uh, provide uh, incentives or we can meet out some sanctions when people don't want to work. We launched a reform, an unemployment reform, and uh, the compensation rules can be applied until November the 1st. We'll have to find the ways and means so that these rules are expanded. But um, it will be a complex uh, debate. If we backtrack on the uh, unemployment reform, we will lose out in terms of incentives. And uh, second thing, the president made a commitment during the election campaign. So uh, mandatory work in exchange for active solidarity income. So, but reality is different. The active solidarity income is a, is a right. And it is a right that you will get according to your uh, income. This does not change. But once you've got the uh, right, uh, what about reintegration of people into the uh, labor market? Of course, you have some economic issues. Public spending has to be brought under control. So it is not acceptable uh, that uh, people uh, accept to stay at home um, in exchange for uh, benefits and employment benefits. So structural unemployment, this is something that we went through for many years, and the political class thought that giving the active solidarity income will uh, enable people uh, to feel dignified, but that's not the case. It's a poverty trap, or we have a responsibility to shoulder. The active uh, solidarity income should be given to people, but for a limited period. So that's why we need to integrate people, and we need to come up with uh, some job offers. And of course, if uh, people don't want to be reintegrated into the labor market, the active solidarity income should be suspended. So we will uh, take that into account. We need to work with the local authorities because they have uh, uh, some remit in terms of training. We are working with uh, the uh, employment, uh, national employment uh, body, and we need to work with the private companies, uh, private companies that could help us in order to find job offers, to get job offers. And for those people who have been aloof of the uh, labor market, uh, these people will be able to get a job back. France Travail. Uh, we haven't uh, established uh, all the parameters, but coordination is key, and there should be a single uh, contact person for the job seeker and for the uh, company. So, uh, of course, uh, this will take time. Uh, there's a second assumption. I mean, we need to work on the front office. We need to welcome the job seekers, and we need to improve coordination of the public and private uh, uh, stakeholders. So uh, you know exactly what is the most uh, uh, feasible uh, option. So we need to get a single uh, contact point in order uh, to reduce the number of jobless people. Mr. Kope, what do you think of these avenues of actions? I mean, what is your take on that? Is it fast enough? We are trying to be as fast as possible, but these are uh, significant uh, topics have a concern. Um, of course, I hope that my concern will be dispelled, but I think that um, people will be given some subsidies, but they won't be uh, anything in exchange. But I think that we need to uh, focus on uh, on, on this issue. There are some counterparts uh, to, to, to get when people uh, get some subsidies. So the government is eager to get to give subsidies to people, but there's 
no counterpart. There's nothing in exchange. So you have uh, two blocks, far right and far left. They are very powerful, and they will prevent things from being done. And that's a genuine risk if you consider the situation. And there's a second issue. I think uh, that we need to focus on the different professions and on the uh, different individual situations. When you talk uh, about uh, employment uh, uh, as a global concept, uh, it doesn't uh, dovetail with reality. In some uh, areas, uh, there's a shortage of people. So you have the uh, uh, digital industry. There's a lot to be done, and we know that it's very difficult to recruit people. And the same goes for sustainable development. You have the hotel and the catering industries, and uh, it's very difficult to recruit and hire people, even though these uh, sectors are sectors for the future. So have some misgivings. We're talking about vocational training. We're talking about apprenticeship. But there's something that we tend to forget. At school, uh, some messages should be delivered to young people. What does it mean to work in a postmodern society? And I think that this is not uh, uh, a message that is being delivered. We've been uh, talking about meaning, meaning at work. I'm very sensitive to this approach. So uh, the uh, uh, class warfare is over. You don't have the bad uh, uh, employer and the employee who is exploited. But this is not what is at stake. There are some people who will say, why, why do I do that? And uh, the movement has been started in the US. So we need to reinvent the future. Uh, profit sharing. Profit sharing is important. You have to tell employees that uh, you will get a profit sharing scheme or you will make a career in a company. This is what you're going to learn while working. These are the people that you will be meeting, even though there's a, a, a bit of remote working and it's a different rhetoric. So I think that. Uh, um, if you consider the political rhetoric, these messages are not delivered. And at that time, uh, uh, we will continue to give subsidies. And uh, when you are a, a political leader, you are criticized. And uh, of people don't uh, want uh, uh, to get annoyed. And people are very happy with good news. And that's why we can move into a, a terrible a spiral. Elena, you wanted to add something? Just a few words. Uh, allow me to chip in. There's a widespread problem for companies. Companies find it difficult uh, to recruit. And that's the same in Tunisia. And the welfare system in Tunisia is not as developed as in Europe. I'm a specialist in a family economy in household economics. Uh, with COVID, households were impacted. Uh, something changed um, in the way uh, people uh, live. So. The quest for meaning is key. I think that uh, lots of uh, reforms were uh, adopted. Some uh, companies uh, got uh, subsidies in order to recruit people. Uh, payroll taxes were curtailed for companies. So I think that uh, companies should address the, follow the following question. Are these jobs uh, enticing? Are these jobs attractive? I mean, can I uh, do my whole career uh, in this company? But what is important uh, is to make sure that uh, young people are committed to the company. There should be a sense of pride. And I think that the HR uh, people uh, uh, should uh, uh, take into account that work has changed and that uh, with uh, the new forms of work, uh, uh, the meaning of work has changed. Lots of reforms have been adopted, but we need to think about the links between the companies and the schools. What do young people want? How do we make sure that jobs are enticing for uh, young people? 
it's not a matter of having a free month job. Young people, you're right. I mean, uh, they want to get a job, but uh, they move from one training program to another. So there are lots of uh, problems uh, for young people, but also for uh, senior citizens. I mean, senior citizens, they have to work longer. But when they turn uh, 60, I mean, they are told to leave the company. So if we talk about end of careers, that's going to be part of the questions of access, ex acceptability and the acceptability of the reform of our pension system. We, the, because professional partners uh, say they want to work on this, let's do it. Let's talk about uh, work of, uh, for seniors and also about difficult work conditions. I'd like to tell Jean-Francois Copé, after five years, I'm not tired and I'm going to continue with the reforms and we're determined to apply all of the rules for uh, uh, unemployment insurance is the case for the pension reform. This is also the case with a certain number of public partners. I'm thinking of the local authorities, those who can suspend a uh, act of solidarity income when the person is not meeting the criteria anymore. That's part of their competency, so we have to work uh, with at all these levels. And we'll also work with our social partners when we revalue the work. So, so we had to look at how we, re, how we give new value to the social assistance and also to the uh, to earnings. So there are consequences for different uh, industrial fields and uh, some figures have come out regularly. The, the minimum wage has increased by 5.9% in a year, but the employees in general in the different industrial sectors have gone up by 6% in a year because there's been shortage in labor, because there's been inflation. So that leads to this increase in wages in a mechanical way and beyond the mechanics in a discussion. Many decisions were taken by social partners. The UNEDIC decided to under-index the uh, inflation correction for uh, unemployment insurance, 2.9 percent, because if we all look at this and work at it together at all levels, the companies, the government, social partners, we can shorten the, or close the gap between uh, real wages and the subsidies that people receive when they're unemployed. This is going to require collective work and a lot of coordination. So there are hands that are going up. Alain Roumiak, if you'd just like to say something before we take the questions. I wanted to say that a lot, a big part of the solution is found in the companies. In each sector, there are companies that are more uh, attractive than others and that manage and recruiting more easily than others because they have taken on board a certain number of n new situations, as you talked about, the idea of uh, quality of life in the workplace accelerated by COVID. I think this trend existed, but it's a real topic in the hotel and restaurant industry, but not only. And what about uh, remote working? So this is... Uh, it's the meaning that I get from my job and the pride I have working for a company. What is their environmental record? What is their social commitment, societal commitment? What type of governance do they have? So these are topics. If the companies want to be able to attract the talents that they need, they must deal with these issues. Some have started to do so and have fewer problems than others. The last topic concerning companies. There's no point in getting worried about certain topics. We're lacking skills structurally in a certain number of professions. Either they don't exist or you're just going to pay a lot more for them than you would like to. So we have to train. We have to open training up to new populations. And I think that this is a vector for integration. It's, it's easier to go and address the disabled people and people from minorities in these cases. So companies have their responsibility, and we see that there are some who succeed better than others. And so this is the type of work we have to do. Ingo, you wanted to add something? Yeah. Very, very quick point, uh, just to change a little bit. Uh, the, the gear. I mean, I think what we need in Europe is more ent ent entrepreneurship. 
I mean, uh, and I think that we overpenalize new entrepreneurs in, in Europe. They are uh, heavily tax taxated, uh, very heavy taxes for uh, new firms that are created, and probably we are overregulated. And at the, end, at the end of the day, we have to bear in mind that those who create jobs are entrepreneurs and, 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 and firms and corporates. And we need to, to find uh, more efficient taxation to promote that on the one hand, and probably to have a much more efficient expenditure management to allow for a more fiscal friendly for uh, new firms. Encore un nouveau chantier, hein, Monsieur le Ministre. On va passer aux questions. Oui, alors, Monsieur, vous avez le micro, allez-y, ça marche. Sir. I would like to come back to reaching full employment. Despite the heat, we could be more ambitious and try to reach quality full employment, not just satisfy ourselves with quality quantitative indicators, whether you have a job or not. No, you want a stable job that's well paid and recognized. And I think we need to raise the bar. We need to have, we need to be more demanding. And there is also an urgency for this. We're not that close to full employment today from this good quality full employment. And Mr. Coppe, I agree with you. You are right to say, let's watch the destination of public money. You had billions and billions that were given to companies without a lot of conditions and without many results. And we, it would have been better to have a stricter control of these, uh, this financing. Now, as a solution, perhaps we could address debates that have been forbidden until now. In the sectors with the labor shortages, these are public services. Let's employ, uh, there are considerable sources of labor to satisfy the needs of the uh, public services today. And, I'm, and I also agree with the minister. I heard him say, work more collectively. That doesn't mean individually, and it means sharing work. Is this is an insulting word today. It seems to me that, and we know that for problems of financing, we can solve these problems. We have enough money that was uh, attributed in an unconditional way to companies, and we also have the passive money from unemployment. And I think that we could reach high quality full employment in an urgent manner, especially miracle growth is not here. Uh, we know that productivity is not that low and strong growth is forbidden for environmental reasons. Thank you for your comment. It wasn't really a question. I just wanted to say to Mr. Coppe, we are the same age. And for 30 years now, you've been saying that there are uh, uh, people who are unemployed, who are you, who are pulling too much from the Social Security. People want to buy homes, get married, have children like you, like me. And I think that the active solidarity income does not allow people to emancipate themselves. It's just a few hundred euros a month. It's disastrous. And another word for Mr. Dussop, I really appreciated your message. I would like you to rearm certain services like the um, uh, <clears throat> occupational doctors, labor inspectors, these things have disappeared and it, I don't know why it's very useful. So let's bring back some of the measures that existed in the past and that will facilitate full employment. Thank you for your comments. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, if you hear us. Thank you, I'm not going to uh, debate uh, with you. I just have two questions. Full employment is also uh, learning that leads to employment. The government succeeded with the uh, apprenticeship. And today, I'm the president of two schools, uh, one business school, one engineering school. And France Compétence has uh, billions of euros of deficits, and we're going to have uh, less financing. In the, for the next school year, we're going to bring down apprenticeship because we don't think we'll have enough students for this apprenticeship program. Now, for the full employment balance, quality of life in the workplace, quality of jobs, and quality of pay. No 
problem for uh, employers to increase wages. If we can increase productivity, we were often told that we increased wages without increasing productivity and we have to bring social charges down. It's the President of the Republic took a commitment in this direction. I'd, I'm the ch chair of the AGS, the uh, organization that guarantees salaries. We see that a lot of companies are going out of business. We're going to be paying 20% more this year in terms of our contributions, and we're going to have to pay 1 billion euros this year to support wages. So this is a, a good uh, social driver. M Minister will work alongside you because we see that there are uh, a lot of companies that are going under. It's a fully, uh, uh, it's a system that doesn't cost anything to the state or the employees. It's just based on the social charges for employers of 0.15%. And we will, we will support you in, in the work that you're doing on this topic. Another question? Dire rapidement parce qu'il ne reste plus beaucoup de temps malheureusement. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for the quality of your presentations. But I have a question for the minister and uh, for our professor. After the industrial revolution, the mus machines replaced muscles, and now algorithms are replacing our brains. There are algorithms like machine learning and deep learning that can teach themselves, learn themselves, and in the long term, instead of full employment, will we not have zero employment? Could we see that in certain professions today for journalists and traders soon? The challenges of new technologies that destroy jobs is a topic that has been addressed in, and I, the conclusion is that Technological progress it will no, prevent us from working in the future. It is true that we have to track things that are going on. Remote working is was a challenge in certain European countries like Romania where people didn't have computers at home. It was very complicated for them. But in a country like France, even the most even the most elderly have some training on IT on computers. I don't see I see that robots are we're seeing some in supermarkets, but I don't think that it's really putting the future labor market at risk. Minister, did you want to add something? And then we're going to have to conclude. We might have time for one last question. I just wanted to agree with uh, my colleague beside me. I don't believe in a society without labor, that labor changes uh, with technology, uh, yes, but I don't believe in a, a society without work. It's a factor for emancipation and dignity. I think that it's fully anchored. I can't even imagine for a single second that we would not have jobs. So I don't know how we'll work, but we will work. And to, uh, for Christian, the GES is a very uh, good system. There is an increase in the number of company failures compared with last year and compared with 2020, but we all know that the failure rate in the last two years was very low because the protection systems that we set up collectively avoided that companies went under, even companies that should have gone under and escaped for a year or two because they were getting a lot of public uh, support. For apprenticeship, I share your opinion. France Compétence is a great machine. It's a quantitative success. We want a million apprentices. We have to make some adjustments. And as Jean-Francois Copé said, I'm still a minister in a budget in my head. This is a, a machine that's a good machine, but it won't go very far. We have to make some adjustments with the support of a lot of our social partners in the MEDEF to find margins. We can find margin without challenging apprenticeship programs. We're really at the end, so just a very quick question. I wanted to come back onto what was said earlier in the debate. We talked a lot about the main themes around employment, how to reach full employment, which was the topic of this session, and then about the meaning of work. But I wanted to go back even further, and the transition it was obvious, but today, when many countries are talking about universal income and we're dealing with environmental topics and the destruction of work, 
I don't, I don't wish for any of this, but why actively encourage people by hardening, as you said in your third measure, the integration and by professionalizing teaching when we see that there are real shortcomings in primary and, and secondary schools right now. Why do you want to reach, why is reaching full employment still a key objective that is still at the core of all government discussions? So just a quick word to conclude, to produce, to produce, quite simply. It, maybe this is a disagreement that we will have, but we're not in degrowth and we're not against progress. We want to produce and we consider that by reestablishing our public accounts, by consolidating and uh, our, our, our social programs, this requires production with a simple principle. In, in order to redistribute wealth, we have to produce wealth. Why focus on the professional when we have theory, theoretical needs? One does not stand in the way of in the other. Both professional and academic training are important. I, I've been in politics for 20 years. I left the socialist pos party because of uh, universal income. I don't think that it's something that can work. I want people to become autonomous, to emancipate themselves and work, and the, the money that we earn from work is the best tool for emancipation. So produce and emancipate. So that was a very quick answer. And that will be our conclusion. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.